So a winter bee is basically a, uh, a nurse bee in waiting. So it's a, uh, so they hatched out and never really became a nurse bee. So basically these bees accumulate a lot of uh, fats. We call them fat bodies, uh, phytolelogen. So, and a few different uh, hormones and chemicals. And uh, they say sometimes they're low in juvenile hormones. They use all these big words, but really in a nutshell, it means that it's a bee that hasn't been a nurse bee yet. Uh, hence the reason we'll talk a bit about pollen patties, but the risk of pollen patties uh, or feeding pollen substitute in winter or never stopping is you'll actually never have winter bees because they're always going to be brood rearing. So at some point you do need to stop feeding pollen. Why? Because the bees need a break and you actually need winter bees to survive the winter or else it's just a bunch of summer bees in a box that are short-lived. They can live a month to six weeks. Uh, so it means if you get a long cold spell, uh, you don't get to your colonies, uh, either they'll starve out or they won't have nutrition to build a healthy, healthy continuous brood over uh, some of your winters. So anyways, a winter bee is a nurse bee in waiting and there's a bunch of triggers that trigger that uh, one is up here for example would be in late july early august uh, we usually get our first killing frost uh, so it means that the native pollens native plants pretty much stop producing and then the bees go into uh, starvation mode i won't say starvation mode but they go uh, protein deficient and when they go protein deficient, uh, you can quickly see the temperatures in the nest are dropping to uh, 20 degrees Celsius uh, from up from uh, 35 Celsius, so 95 F. So basically the bees are shutting down or the queen is uh, shutting down her, her nest. Uh, what I do is I supplement, and I'll show you a chart, I supplement pollen patties. I use 15% uh, global patties. Uh, until early September because uh, if I didn't do that then my nurse my nurse my winter bees are pretty much getting produced uh, early August mid-August and then by September the nest would be pretty much uh, hardly any brood left so that's why I do pollen patties uh, from late uh, July early September is just to keep the queen laying and make sure they have uh, protein uh, to keep raising brood uh, and then it's to manage the age of my my uh, my winter bees I do cut them off so usually by early September I'll stop adding uh, pollen patties so it means that by uh, mid-September pretty much the nest is starting to cool down uh, and then by early October uh, basically the queens completely stop laying and then the final bees are being hatched out. So it's a way for me to, to manage one, the age of my bees so that they don't have to live 250 days. Uh, and then the other one is to make sure that, uh, that final round of winter bees or brood is, uh, getting proper nutrition. And by cutting off pollen, it's guaranteeing that the there's a quick reduction in uh, brood rearing. So the queen will shut down fairly quick and you can see it by the temperatures. And then it means that all these hatching bees won't have any brood to raise. Hence, they become winter bees. And that's because I hear and I watch and I, I read some of the, the people's comments and they have sugar candy and powdered protein supplements on their colonies year round and I'm like well you'll never have winter bees and if you got no winter bees uh, it'll make overwintering quite difficult even in warmer climates so things that contribute to longe longevity of these bees like I said is they'll have higher vital allergen uh, their protein stores uh, fat bodies and all that type of stuff is higher than normal uh, so it actually helps with their immune system uh, because they're not very active uh, and there's no much, there's not much flying. 
uh, at this time of year, or I'd say in September, October, it means that the bees aren't wearing out. Uh, and it means that uh, metabolically, they'll be a much younger and healthier. Uh, like I mentioned before, no brood. So instead of generating brood food for the bees, they're just going to keep it stored in their fat bodies and in their bodies, which is what you want. And then winter bees are, I'm not sure if they're bigger, but uh, just their configuration and their energy stores on their bodies. My hand's freezing up. Uh, hence the little shake, uh, it helps them uh, do what they have to do. So literally, uh, at some point, piece of advice, cut off the pollen, because uh, you need those bees to be become winter bees. Uh, understand when your final pollens are, your natural pollens are, so you may or may not need to add uh, supplements towards the end of your season. Uh, there is, I think it's out of Penn State, uh, there's some research that said uh, summer conditions affect your, uh, the health and your probability of over overwintering. And if you think about it, that's just nutrition. So if you have a shitty summer uh, and there's low pollen or there's a pollen dearth, you as a beekeeper, you need to figure that out and supplement when you have to. And... Uh, and do what you got to do to make sure your bees have what they need to survive. So if you don't have your pollen cycle, you don't know when your, your pollen stops, uh, it's key things to, uh, to figure out. Uh, the other reason I do add pollen patties in August is because natural pollens are down. A lot of these plants, the leafy plants here, uh, will have rust on them okay rust spores and the bees will collect them so i'm just going to show you a, a clip this is from a microscopy i did uh, a couple weeks ago and you can see the gut is just full of rust spores uh, and not much research on this but uh, from i think randy randy oliver and some of the stuff he's done and some of the analysis is most likely, uh, especially when there's nothing else, uh, rust spores is probably low nutrition and it doesn't provide the bees with what they need to, to, to have a healthy diet. Uh, chances are when it's mixed in with uh, natural pollen, it probably adds to their diet and there's things in there that are probably good for them. But uh, as a mono source of protein, it's probably not good. It'd be interesting to test and, and actually uh, figure that out. Let's see, like always, uh, good healthy winter bees, make sure your mites are under control. If you've got too many mites, uh, it'll cause you some headaches. Uh, and then what I do too in late winter, so all my colonies have uh, feeder trays, slots in their uh, upper insulation. So there's a slot there where I can add uh, pollen patties and sugar fondant if I had to. Uh, and what that does, like you'll see, I'll show you a chart right now. Uh, when I do add pollen, the temperature uh, spikes up to 35 Celsius uh, pretty quick. So it tells me that there's a queen there. And what that does is it just makes sure that there's enough bees in there uh, come spring uh, for me to have a decent season. And uh, I can hit the ground running so it's it's a way of uh, maximizing my season uh, this year I'm taking off on a trip uh, late March uh, typically I don't add them till early April but I'll be gone so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull all the ins insulation off I'll leave the top insulation on uh, but I'll throw on probably a good two pounds of uh, pollen patties and then fill the enclosure up, up top there with some fondant uh, because I will be gone for a while so and then I'll clear those entrances so that the bees can uh, manage their space so hopefully we do get a warm spell but I doubt it but I'll be gone for about a month and a half so I got to do what I got to do to do my best to, to set them up uh, for a decent spring and I'll be back mid-May uh, and hopefully they don't swarm by then. 
So in a nutshell, one of your jobs to understand your winter bee situation is you do need to understand your, your natural cycles and what your conditions are uh, and your local environment because it, it is very local because uh, I was, uh, what was I doing? I was watching a podcast. I think, it was, like I mentioned before, uh, two bees in a podcast, uh, pretty, usually pretty good. And this one was okay too. Uh, but it's, yes, there are a lot of different reasons why winter bees get triggered and what winter bees are about. Uh, but nutrition or a lack of is one of the main triggers. So for example, I think it's Randy, Ale Randy Oliver again, he mentions that, uh, his dearth, he's got a major dearth in summer. Uh, where it dries up so in the spring uh, there's nice spring f spring flowers and then for about two three months core summer it gets really dry and hot not, not much nutrition and the bees go in a dearth and his long long lived bees are more in during that dearth so there's a good chance that uh, winter bees or bees typically due to uh, a lack of nutrition so hopefully that helps uh, and let's see if I have anything else in my notes but uh, I'd say in a nutshell that's that so we'll leave it there so anyways this will be my last video for a while uh, but uh, somebody's asked for a video on my sensors and how I, I monitor all this stuff so I'll uh, I'll, uh, I'll attempt that and see how that goes. Uh, but, uh, yeah, cheers.